Monsieur le Président, je vous demande pardon, mais je... Je avoir un check, M. le Président. Merci. Je peux avoir un check encore Oui. Merci. After the fall of the Berlin Wall and the Soviet Iron Curtain, the new states which had gained their independence were able to establish and maintain relations with the Allies. Kazakhstan became one of them. At that time, one of the main tasks was to send an ambassador to foreign countries to promote the state and to build relations. The European Union, unlike others, did not turn a blind eye to the efforts of the young state. This year marks the 25th anniversary of the establishment of bilateral relations. Despite thousands of miles between the old continent and the young state, political, trade, social and cultural ties between them were gradually established. The first embassies were also opened. Kazakhstan's representative office was established in 1993 in the heart of Europe, in Brussels and in the following year the official European office opened its door in Almaty on the slopes of the Alatau Mountains. The building, which has more than a century's worth of history, has been owned by the Embassy of Kazakhstan since 1993 and is one of the historical monuments of Belgium. All relations are based on specific agreements. By agreeing with 15 EU member states in the 1990s, by the state which could barely stand on its feet, was not easy, particularly in addressing trade issues. Nevertheless, negotiations were held at the appropriate level, and in 1995 the first partnership and cooperation agreement was signed between the European Union and Kazakhstan. The bilateral relations began by taking concrete actions. One of the historic steps made by independent Kazakhstan in the new era of sovereignty was nuclear disarmament. This decision was in line with the European Union foreign policy values. However, a great deal of work was undertaken to convert this mutual understanding into an official agreement. I would say that there was a reluctance on the one hand. At the very beginning we were hardly even strongly engaged in nuclear weapons. They said they would work with us only if we got rid of it. Only then the investment would be channeled. Our president then said, we have to get rid of this. We have our own oil, gas and technology. We can lift up our heads and get on our own feet. Thanks to the efforts of Kazakhstan's first foreign minister, Mr. Tolutai Sulimenov, and other ambassadors, three key agreements on nuclear non-proliferation and nuclear fusion were signed between the European Union and Kazakhstan. President Nurzultan Nazarbayev has paid eight official visits to Brussels over the last 25 years. Each visit ended with signing new investment projects and contracts. Such credibility led to the opening of representative offices in Kazakhstan and investment by such famous European companies as Shell, Schlumberger, ENI, Agib, British Petroleum, Repsol and Lasmo. Uh, well, one of the things the delegation did was to establish Eurobac as a sort of association of European firms working in uh, Kazakhstan. 
and uh, this is quite important to, to have this focal point as it were which could uh, negotiate through us with government about issues dealing with uh, uh, direct, foreign direct investment and investment. Of course most of the investment from Europe went into the uh, either to the oil industry, oil, oil and gas industry itself or peripheral industries around it, but not all of it. Uh, it has to be said though sometimes there were uh, problems with smaller investments. People all over the world do not come to Brussels just for political interests. It's one of the most attractive tourist destinations in Europe. Travelers are mainly interested in famous cultures and delicious waffles. Brussels is not only the capital of Belgium, but it's also the center of hundreds of international organizations' headquarters. Brussels is not just a city where the trends of international politics are identified and so many issues are resolved but it is also the gateway to the massive 500 million strong market. For this reason, countries in every corner of the world are trying to improve relations with the Eurocentrist politicians who come together in this palm-sized country. As the saying goes, peace promotes profit. Kazakhstan is interested in such positive relations. Consequently, bilateral economic ties are also rapidly increasing. For example, in 1999, total trade amounted to $2.2 billion. In 2006, it reached $9.9 .9 billion. And 11 years later, in 2017, European countries and Kazakhstan traded $30 billion. Then also, when I became a commissioner, I, of course, remembered very well that Kazakhstan had already made a good development. And then I found it was time and help uh, for the partnership agreement, which in the end was done. And I think now you see that Kazakhstan is already a mature country. We have been working a lot on the question of rule of law, human rights, uh, but particularly also on uh, green technology, uh, green energy, very important question, but then also on small and medium-sized enterprises, what can be done in order to enhance employment, for instance. Ms. Ferrero Waldner, who served as the Commissioner for Foreign Policy of the European Union, summarized the main points from both sides. Experts believe that the most important sector of the economy, which is considered to be promising, is the green economy. There are also sectors that Kazakhstan itself wants to develop, uh, green economy, I'm thinking of the highly successful Expo uh, Astana 2017, which is a common challenge where also the EU can help. We have companies in this sector, be it in waste management, in water management, be it in recycling, in energy efficiency, which are amongst the world's leaders. And I think that we can uh, help developing one of this sector, which is also a goal uh, for Kazakhstan. Diplomacy is not just about politics and economics. There is a field that allows people to understand each other without saying a word and brings them together without signing any papers, and that is culture. Kazakhs, who always welcome guests with open arms, have long been interested in European art. Italian opera singers, Irish step dancers, French violinists and English rock bands have long been known in Kazakhstan. The Kazakh youth who have chosen the art sector also say that we can learn a lot from Europe and show them a lot as well. One of them is the young designer Kolan Madi. My capsule shop is not just a business, this is to introduce European brands and expertise to our country, including exchange of experience in this field. 
We cannot compare our domestic fashion to that of Europe, but the level of development is not bad. We have a lot to learn. I think it's necessary to bring our homeland's young talents who can surprise us with their design, unique shape and quality, and then our people can get acquainted with them and appreciate them. We can call this a cultural exchange of experiences. It's hard to enter the art scene of Europe and to show yourself there. That's why we need to prepare 100%. It's necessary to master language skills well, because we work with many foreign conductors. Our colleagues speak foreign languages too. Basically, opera singers should know three four languages – German, French, Italian and English. Kazakhstan's famous opera singer, Sundat Bai Gojin, said the European elite art has such a great deal of difficulty. However, Europe also gives an opportunity not only to large companies but also to ordinary youth, because young people mostly look for education in the Western world. Educational programmes such as the Erasmus create access to the best European universities for the younger generation aspiring for education and science. Uh, what is really important for me is diversity and opportunities that uh, European education may give you. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of things that you can exchange with others. It's a uh, cultural exchange, it's uh, also opportunity to study another language, not, um, not only English. As the Kazakhs say, an ambassador is a peacemaker. Over the past 25 years, the two sides have had a lot of diplomats who have made great efforts to strengthen and develop the European Union, Kazakhstan relations. Professional colleagues who came from the old continent to Saryaka land remember Kazakhstan as following. Now we will meet with Norbert Justin, who served as ambassador to Kazakhstan from 2008 to 2011. Today he is retired, but has a lot of memories to share with us. Kazakhstan uh, does huge efforts to um, present itself to the world and to make known uh, Kazakh culture, uh, which in it's true is not something uh, Europeans know uh, are very often in contact with, but uh, I think that uh, these efforts will be a fruit and um, will, be, uh, will show that will bring people closer together. And um, um, I think that um, the expo was also um, something that was um, noted. Well, the, the dock was found at uh, Dostik uh, Street in Amati. The dock comes from Amati. Uh, its name is Laika. And um, uh, it has a very strong character, like uh, the people of Kazakhstan. Uh, but uh, the main feature of the dog is that uh, it really protects me. Uh, and uh, that gives me a good feeling of uh, safety and security. So after that, the dog went, went with us to Astana, to Moscow. Now the dog is here in, uh, in Brussels.
people are very generous, very open, very lively, enthusiastic, and this is a, this is always a pleasure to be to be in Kazakhstan and to enjoy a fantastic hospitality and some even special local uh, delicatess uh, like horse meat, which I think is uh, uh, very good. <laughs> um, not everybody likes it, but I do. Um, but uh, indeed, uh, it, is, it is important that uh, we continue uh, developing. Um, Kazakhstan is a dynamic country, very, uh, it's con you could say it's a land of opportunity. In that. Alan Wadham's wife travelled the world with him and wrote a book based on her memories. There was a special section about Kazakhstan. Of course, this country is associated with only pleasant memories. For me, Kazakhstan was the... Uh hosting the place I like best and for me it was kind of predestined I remember when I was a boy I bought books about Central Asia and about the steppe and so on I was fascinated by the steppe and then 50 years 60 days later I don't know how long I find myself there and I arrived in October and it was snowing at night it was snowing but I felt completely at home There were a few Kazakh ambassadors who brought the distant Europe closer, officially defended Astana's interests and promoted bilateral relations. One of them is Konstantin Zhigalov. He recalls his six-year career in Brussels. Well, let me say that in 2003, uh, our trade with the European Union was about maybe four billion US dollars per year. And just uh, in a few years, uh, by the end of my term in the uh, European Union, it increased in ten, ten times. And the European Union became uh, the trade partner number one for Kazakhstan, and uh, still uh, the trade partner number one from 2004, and the biggest investor to Kazakhstan, uh, as far as FDI are concerned. So it's really important for us, and I think that this is one of the main results uh, of that uh, very important period of our relationship. Not everyone can have his cake and eat it in tackling complex interstate issues. But this is a mission of professional diplomats. There are a number of national peculiarities in this task. Those in the know say that there are a lot of bureaucratic barriers in Brussels offices and that in Astana, the frequent rotations of experts causes inconveniences. We have, of course, the governmental pillar uh, in, uh, from our Kazakh partners. Um, uh, not always is that easy, uh, because uh, there are changes in the government, there are staff rotating in the ministry, so you build the relations with uh, some counterparts and all of a sudden they are being promoted or appointed somewhere else, so you have to start from the very beginning. Uh, but in general, I do note the openness in the dialogue and uh, uh, in the continuity of what we uh, are achieving. Konstantin Zhigalov, who served in the Belgian capital city for many years, says that after a while he understood the essence of European diplomacy. There was one interesting book. One man, one diplomat worked in Japan 28 years and uh, finally he wrote. Uh, I think I started to understand Japan. <laughs> I would say that after my six years in European Union, I think I started to understand the mechanism of uh, the uh, European di the diplomacy. <laughs> Certain agreements, documents and programs that build a solid partnership between the European Union and Kazakhstan have been adopted step by step. In 2007, the European Union approved a new strategy for Central Asian countries and soon Kazakhstan adopted the Path to Europe for 2009 to 2011. These programmes were the steps that led to concrete results. We also understand that our democracy in that time was really young, very fragile. And we wanted to do everything step by step and we, as you know, even adopted uh, the special program Way to Europe, Kazakh Way to Europe. 
and uh, we just demonstrated that it was not just a program, it was not just events, it was a vector of our development. And we, in that time, already had definitely a common values with the European Union. For example, in 2016, the direct investment from the EU countries amounted to $11 billion. This is three times more than the investment from the United States, and ten times more that of Russia, and a striking example of intensive economic relations. Achieving such a result was a joint effort by both sides. One of them is adjusting Kazakhstani goods to world standards. We also had two uh, TAIC seminars on intellectual property rights and uh, technical regulations, which I think were an important um, um, support for the people in Kazakh administration to make sure that uh, they are prepared for regulatory framework enabling the Kazakh goods to observe and to respect the requirements uh, that are necessary in order to get an easier access on the European Union market. Kazakhstan for the European Union is one of the key partners in Central Asia and it's also reflected uh, in the fact that we signed an enhanced partnership and cooperation uh, agreement with Kazakhstan which is moving uh, the relationship uh, between the EU and Kazakhstan to a qualitatively new uh, level. And also I'm pleased to know that uh, Kazakhstan uh, more and more uh, plays an important role uh, as a regional uh, leader, as a regional uh, player. Uh, one uh, clear uh, example of that is uh, their membership uh, in the Security Council and uh, uh, one of uh, the priorities of Kazakhstan and we very much welcome it uh, is focus on regional uh, security in Central Asia. An important document cited by the EU Special Representative for Central Asia, Peter Burian, is the Enhanced Partnership and Cooperation Agreement between the European Union and Kazakhstan. The sides signed this agreement in 2015. Currently, 19 of the 28 EU countries have approved the agreement. EPCA includes 29, covers 29 areas of cooperation and um, it reflects now the true level of our indeed enhanced uh, partnership and cooperation that we have with the European Union. We are naturally also happy that uh, Kazakhstan became the first country in the region to sign such an agreement with the European Union. We hope that our example will um, help others uh, to go down that same road. I don't think there were any obstacles for the uh, concluding of this agreement, but uh, uh, of course there were um, some complications and uh, uh, we negotiated this agreement during uh, more than four years. It was not an easy process and uh, at uh, certain periods uh, the process of negotiation was uh, tough because uh, the sides came to some points when uh, they had uh, to take uh, some time to think over and then we uh, started the negotiations again. Compliance with democratic principles is one of the main requirements of the European Union. Therefore, the complicated and long-term ratification process should be supported by all EU member states and the role of the people's representatives and MPs in this process is highly important. The role of the European Parliament and the European Council is very crucial, and the most important decisions of the European Union are settled in this building, the European Council. I am pretty sure that everything will be okay, and the European Parliament will ratify this. Very important for, for European Union, also for Kazakhstan, but for European Union, very important agreement. Głosowanie zostaje zamknięte. Przyjęliśmy i w związku z tym kolejny raport pani 
poseł Jak on Sali, z tym związany. Umowa o wzmocnionym partnerstwie i współpracy między Unią a Kazachstanem. Rezolucja. Głosowanie imienne. Głosowanie zostaje otwarte. Głosowanie zostaje zamknięte. It is natural for people to communicate, travel and migrate in the current worldwide globalization process. In this case, the main mission of diplomats is to satisfy such needs of people and to create the best possible conditions for all citizens. Yes, European Union granted for some countries visa-free regime uh, and at the same time analyzing the situation and relations with these countries of European Union. We, Kazakhstan looks much more uh, favorable country for having uh, this kind of regimes. But uh, we in Kazakhstan, we don't need uh, free uh, visa-free regime with the European Union. We are not asking for this. We, we need uh, just a uh, much uh, more simplified uh, way of issuing visas in Kazakhstan for our citizens. Because we have students, we have business people, we have scientists who are traveling to European uh, countries with their um, uh, jobs, with their uh, endeavors. We have tourists visiting European countries. And we want uh, Kazakhstanis to uh, visit Europe to have uh, uh, relations with, uh, uh, with them, uh, people to people contacts. The relationship between the European Union and Kazakhstan is developing. There are about 3,000 European companies operating in the country. The European Union has funded 350 non-profit projects in Kazakhstan since 1994. There are many things to do in the future. Today it is not just raw materials or industrial projects, but also intercontinental strategic programs which are under consideration. Kazakhstan-European Union relations are not limited only with bilateral agenda. Kazakhstan is actively engaged in drafting recommendations for a renewed EU strategy for Central Asia 2019. As we look into the future, I think that the areas of cooperation can certainly include the uh, restoration, if you will, of the Silk Road of, uh, of the past in the 21st century. The buzzword that we all use is connectivity and strengthening this connectivity across Central Eurasia will benefit uh, both uh, the region of Central Asia but also the European Union and China which are the two largest uh, uh, economic partners lying on both sides of, of Kazakhstan. We are living in a world with a lot of geopolitical changes we are living in a world where values sometimes are put aside, sometimes they are forgotten. So I do believe that this uh, quarter of a century will represent the important building block for more, many more years of bilateral relations into the futures based on commonly shared values and interests. The well-known French playwright Adrien Decaussel said that diplomacy is the longest way from one point to another. Relations between the European continent and Kazakhstan, which celebrates its 27th anniversary this year, have come a long way since the 1990s. There is a great deal of work that has been performed by the heads of state, ambassadors, scientists, entrepreneurs and artists to develop strong bilateral ties. The continuing quarter century cooperation is a vivid reality. Euro Dapen Kazakhstan. You Kazakhstan 25, congratulations. Kazakhstan Eurosoyuz, поздравляю! Hey, Kazakhstan 25. 
Казахстан Евросоюз, Тахтаймон. Поздравляю с 25-летием Евросоюз и Казахстан. Казахстан, 25 лет, 